Hi, I'm David Harry, and in this particular video, I'm going to be testing an Electrovoice RD20 running into a Saramonic Smart Rig preamp and then comparing it running into the Camcorder's preamp on its own. Okay, so this is like a noise test and a sensitivity test for the RE20. And it's going to be a test between plugging it straight into the camera and letting the camera do all the preamping. And then plugging it into my Saramonic and then let the Saramonic do all the preamping as well. So it's just to see, you know, if there's any kind of difference in tonality or sensitivity or noise. So at the moment, I'm plugged straight into the camera. And it, although it's not the most ideal way of preamping this particular microphone, because it's um, it's a very insensitive mic and needs a lot of like you know high end uh, preamplification. And by high end, what I mean by that is preamplification which can gain a lot, but without introducing a lot of noise. Okay, so at the moment, what I'm doing, I'm talking into it in normal mode, so there's no bass filter uh, put in. So what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to click in the bass filter. Okay, so this is an example of it now with the with the bass cut on. So it's actually got the shelve and switched in. So the tone of my voice should have changed a little bit. I mean, I haven't got like a mega deep voice or anything. So even in normal mode, you know, I probably wouldn't really need to switch the bass roll off on. Okay, so I'm going to switch it back into normal mode. Okay, so I'm back into normal mode now. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to switch over to the Saramonic shortly. And then after I've switched to the Saramonic, I'll do two more tests afterwards. And that'll be just a count test for this microphone um, compared to it going straight in and then into the Saramonic. And then I'll end with just like a noise test. But you have to bear in mind as well, it's, gone, it's probably going to be a bit noisy just because of this microphone and the way that it is anyway. And that the microphone and the Saramonic are going to have to be gained quite high. Okay, so I'm now onto the Saramonic, and the first thing I've got to mention here is that under normal circumstances, the Saramonic is an amazing preamplifier, but I'm not entirely sure whether it's very well matched to this particular mic. And the reason why I suggest that is only because the gain that I'm having to put on the Saramonic at the moment is massive. Um, it's massive by comparison to any other dynamic microphone that I've ever run through it. And way, way, way higher than, say, a condenser mic, which would be expected anyway, because dynamics tend to be a lot a lot more like insensitive compared to, say, a condenser microphone as far as level and output is concerned. Yeah, so anyway, the first thing to note is the Saramonic is being driven crazy here. And it's not like, uh, it's not a mega expensive preamp. And by not being mega expensive, it actually only costs £22. Now, it works really well for me in many scenarios with like condenser microphones because it, it powers because it can actually send phantom power. In this particular instance, though, I'm going to hazard the guess it's not going to be very well suited to this particular microphone. And that's only because this mic needs massive, massive gain by comparison to any other microphone that I've ever used. And I mean, I've used ribbon mics, which are more sensitive than the RE20. Um, and the other thing as well, you know, when people say like you need like, you know, an expensive preamp for an RE20, let's not confuse like what that really means. What most people probably mean by an expensive preamp is a preamp which actually can gain a lot more than most, but without introducing noise. And, you know, in then terms, then yes, an expensive preamp, but any preamp actually which can gain high without introducing noise would be more suited to this particular microphone. Okay, and maybe the other thing to worth mentioning here is that I'm not um, like doing any processing whatsoever, so there's there's no like EQ or compression going into the, the recording into the camera, and there's actually nothing in post either, so what you're hearing now is exactly as it went in and straight out, so not even any, um, like, like no normalization, even nothing. Now, the only thing that I might do in post and that is to just like get the levels a little bit like closer matched just so that they run together volume wise a bit easier. And the other thing to worth, no, worth mentioning with that is that as I'm going in right now, I'm trying to visually match the input as best as I can to the input without the Saramonic. So effectively, you know, I'm not going to start gaining or over gaining in post to try and match them. Okay, so I'll just give a quick example of it with the, uh, with the base cut filter in. 
Okay, so that's now with the base cut filtered in. And like I said before, you know, I don't have a particularly bassy voice. So for me personally, it's probably not necessary to use the bass cut anyway. So let me take it back in again. Okay, so that's flat again. Okay, so what I'll do now, I'll just get on and I'll do the count tests and then the noise tests, and then I'll come back and do a little bit of a summary at the end as well. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay then, so to the summary, well, the first thing I've got to say is I was massively surprised with uh, the actual results from the Saramonic, and the big surprise for me was I was looking at the Saramonic and thinking to myself, I've never had to gain anything that loud before um, or use that much of a high gain on the Saramonic. So as I was doing the test, I did actually think to myself, no, this isn't going to work out. But as it happens, the Saramonic was actually quieter, regardless of the fact that it was throwing such a high gain into the equation. Now, that for me, that would suggest that the Saramonic is actually a lot better than what I even thought it was already. Um, okay, so but that bit aside, anyway... There was very kind of like slight minor tonality changes here and there between different things. Oh, and also as well, when I put the actual input, uh, sorry, when I put the two files into my edit system, because the inputs that I already had going into the camera from the Saramonic and from going straight into the camera, because they were so close together sound volume wise, I've just left them as is. So there's no gain at all whatsoever in any of these tests. So this definitely has gone in as is and come back out as is. Okay, so any of the other the differences in their tonality or anything like that or preferences one way or the other i'll leave that down to yourself to kind of you know work out what it is that you do or you don't like and the other thing as well what i'm going to do if you check the descriptions below i'll do a link to a wav file that you can download as well um, and then you can actually hear it properly as a wav file now the other thing to bear in mind with that wav file it's going to be in 40 48 kilohertz so it won't be 44.1 the reason for that is is because it's being recorded into a camcorder and camcorders generally record record at 48k anyway so hopefully you didn't find this too boring and maybe it's been informative for some people or even helpful for some people okay well thanks very much for watching another one of my videos take care and goodbye now